Good morning. Welcome to Unity of the Valley Spiritual Center. We are part of Unity Worldwide Ministries, and you can find us here locally at 350 North Orchard Avenue in Vacaville, California. Let us begin today's service with a prayer from Reverend Dahlia Adams. Let us pray. Let us take a moment and go within to acknowledge and to honor the power and presence that is God in our lives. And we join together today in seeing all people safe, all people protected and folded in the love of God. As we join together in our prayer of protection, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, wherever we are, God is. And so we are so grateful for this presence of God. We see all people enfolded in this love of God. And we say thank you. Thank you, God. Amen. Hi, my name is Gary Eisenberg, and it is my privilege and pleasure to be your service assistant today, especially today on Friendship Sunday. Welcome to Friendship Sunday, and thank you so much for asking your friends to join us. May this service today Bless all of you and spiritually feed you. 
our co-founders, Charles and Myrtle Fillmore, began the study of practical Christianity. And lo and behold, it turned into a movement. What unity is all about is best summarized in our mission statement, which reads, we are all about transforming lives, inspiring growth, creating loving community, and shining the light of God. And if you are here for the first time, we do a practice of shining that light of God by picturing someone in our mind, it could be a friend or a relative, it could be someone in your home right now, could be someone who is sitting next to you, and we behold the divinity in them, the divinity that each one of us has inside. So picture that friend or relative, look at that person sitting next to you, and together, let's say, you are a beautiful child of God, perfect in every way. You are loved unconditionally just the way you are. And for those of you joining us for the first time, we take that in because it is true for ourselves as well. So when you look in the mirror this morning, deep into your eyes, I want you to tell yourself together, I am a beautiful child of God, perfect in every way. I am loved unconditionally just the way I am. And so it is. Amen. We have members in our congregation who are standing by to pray with you. They are called our prayer chaplains. I know this past week has been very, very difficult. We have all been suffering with the lousy weather, with the terrible smoke and ash falling from the sky. These are challenging times, and you need not suffer alone. No. If you are going through a challenge, or a loved one is going through a challenge, or you just want to talk to somebody about when we're going to see blue skies again, the prayer chaplain is the person for you. Simply email unityvv at packbell.net. Again, they are standing by and would be so glad to pray with you. Chaplains, I know you are watching and you bless us with your presence. It is time for announcements. And speaking of the smoke and ash and terrible fires, we do have beloved church members who are slowly recovering from the devastation of a couple weeks ago. Jerry Uliano and David Lewis, Sage Tricano, Dina Mitchell and her sons, Vicki Kreps, the daughter of Christine Kreps, all could use your financial support. There are a couple ways to help them out with that financial support. One is to go to their GoFundMe pages, and you'll see that blue tile on our website at unityvacaville.org. Or if you do not want to go through GoFundMe, simply write a check to Unity of the Valley Spiritual Center. In the memo line, indicate who you would like to help with that financial support. And Teresa Meadows will be here on Friday between 3 and 5, collecting those checks. Thank you so much for supporting our beloved church members and helping them recover. Our next announcement has to do with our Fall Reflection Study Program that starts this week. It is not too late to sign up. You will simply go to our website and you will see all the study group sessions are listed. Once you decide the session you would like to attend, you will email the church at unityvv at packbell.net 
and indicate which session you would like to attend. Now, because of COVID, our bookstore remains closed. So it's going to be up to you to get the book, True, Refer True Refuge, Finding Peace and Freedom in Your Own Awakened Heart by Tara Brock. I have been doing the fall study group probably ever since they started. And I have to tell you, this is one of the most powerful books in my whole 30-year history here at Unity that I've ever read. I am only up to chapter six, and my life has changed and improved dramatically for the better thanks to Tara Brock and the book True Refuge. Highly recommend you reading this book. And friends that are joining us today, you're invited too to join the fall study program. You don't have to be a member of Unity of the Valley Spiritual Center. Simply email unityvv at pacbell.net. And friends, we would be glad and so happy to have you join our study groups and our current members. It is time to sign up for a study group. This book is so powerful. I'm telling you, look in my eyes. It is so powerful. You do not want to miss this opportunity. It's not too late to sign up for a study group. They do start this coming week. And hopefully, I will see you possibly in my study group because I am going to be one of the facilitators this year. So once again, True Refuge by Tara Brock. Even if you don't join a study group, you want to get your hands on this book. It will change your life, guaranteed. Thank you. Friends and current Unity family members, thank you so much for joining us today. We so appreciate your financial support of this broadcast and of our center. Thanks to you, we continue to thrive. Now is the time in our service where we turn inward and center in. And we do that with the statement of faith. I know this past week, it's been really, really hard to remember the statement. But when you look out and you see those gray, ashy skies, there's no better time to say it. So let's say it together right now, because it is so true together. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God the good. And so it is. Amen.
Good morning. My name is Reverend Dahlia Adams, and I am so honored to be here with you today. We are still living through 2020, and at Unity of the Valley, we chose to focus our attention and our intention on the way of peace, knowing that peace is not limited by circumstances. Circumstances can help support that experience of peace, but ultimately, the peace that lives in our hearts, the peace that passes all understanding, is not limited to the circumstances of our life. And what a perfect theme, what a perfect intention for this year that has offered one difficult circumstance after another. So it's good for us to remember that the way of peace comes from within us. And we can bring that peace that lives in our hearts into every circumstance. And we can bless everyone around us with the peace that we bring, the peace that we give. And most of all, we are blessed by the peace that we live and that we nurture and that we share. So now for the next seven weeks, we are focusing on a Fall Reflections small group book study program. And the book also talks about a pathway to peace, how to find peace in our own Awakened Hearts. The name of the book is True Refuge. The author is Tara Brock. And the program runs seven weeks beginning today. Today, Sunday, the 13th, and it goes for seven weeks, ending on the 31st of October. 
Gary already told you about the wonderful opportunities to be part of this program. I urge that too. Whether or not you even want to read this powerful book, there is such a gift in connecting with others in our community to get to know each other, to talk to each other, to support each other. Sometimes I hear such a hunger for that from the people that I talk to. Well, this is an amazing opportunity. And for those of you who are Zoom shy, I have a message from others who have been in the past. We met yesterday on Zoom and they said, oh, I'm so glad I did it. I can't believe that I'm here having a good time meeting with everyone on Zoom. So it might be easier than you think if you need help or support with it. Email the office, email the church, and we'll help you and support you with it. Um, if you have absolutely no device to, to call in Zoom, let us know. Maybe we can help you with that too. So please, I'm inviting everybody. It's, it's a way for us to get together and to connect in beautiful ways. And I agree with Gary that the book the book is both timely and powerful, so it should be a good experience all the way around. Tara Brock is the author of the book, and she's quite an amazing lady. I had the wonderful experience a while ago, almost 20 years ago now, of attending a retreat that she co-led with another Buddhist teacher I really like, Jack Cornfield, and they both made a deep impression. Tara Brock is a clinical psychologist. She, in her clinical psychology practice and in her studies, she focused on the healing power of meditation. She's also a Buddhist by practice. She found Buddhism after she left a yoga ashram where she lived and worked for a while. And she met a teacher named Goldstein, who was part of the Insight Meditation Society. And she learned Buddhism under his teaching, and it became her path. But her path was a Western style of Buddhism with the focus on meditation practice. She embraced insight meditation deeply, and she was one of the founders of the Insight Meditation Society in Washington, D.C. I had a good friend who attended her meditation sittings and raved about it. So she's a, she's a good teacher. She's soft-spoken. So at first you don't know how powerful she is. So she's a retreat leader. She was a yoga teacher in the past. She's an author. She has classes online, so she's a, a meditation teacher today. And she wrote this book that we're studying, True Refuge. So today the focus of the message, the focus of this talk is refuge. And just taking a look at it, if this is what we're going to be talking about for seven weeks, taking a look at what it is. What is refuge? And why does it matter? I mean, why spend seven weeks on refuge? I mean... Isn't that kind of overkill? I mean, everyone, everyone knows what joy is and how important joy is. And we can spend seven weeks, six months, a year talking about joy and no one would question it. And everyone knows how important love is and how we could talk about it endlessly and never quite grasp the fullness of love. We've been focusing on peace for a year and we could keep going. But refuge? I mean, is this really worth seven weeks of our time? I think it is. I think it, 
It's very worth it. Refuge has several definitions, but the ones that I pulled that I really liked, the first one especially, refuge is a condition of being safe. It's a consciousness of being safe. It's a physical condition of being safe. And refuge is also used to describe a place of shelter, that place that provides safety and protection. And so why is that so important? What makes refuge worth studying, exploring, seeking, Refuge allows us to live and to breathe on many, many levels. This is true, and it's not just true for us, for people. Throughout the living world, throughout the animal kingdom, refuge is important, and without it, we cannot live or breathe. I used to, before the pandemic hit and before parks closed, I used to go to a regional park, a a wonderful dog park that's hundreds of acres and dogs get to run free and it's along the water, so I would enjoy walking there. The name of it is Point Isabella, Point Isabel Regional Shoreline. And when you'd walk along the paths, there'd be grassy and dirt areas, and some dogs would be there just transfixed like statues, looking down at the ground, and I would wonder what in the world is going on, and apparently for certain dogs, even more important than getting to run and play is getting to look into gopher holes, waiting for the gopher to come up. So this is basically what it looks like. And they just stand there and look. But the thing is, down deep inside there, there is a gopher. And for that gopher, that hole was his refuge or her refuge. And so the gopher could actually do what gophers do. I guess they dig tunnels and they hang out and maybe eat. That gopher could live and breathe because... It had refuge. Without that gopher hole, all that gopher could do would be run for its life. And there'd be no life. And the breathing would always be rapid and not really healthy because you don't get much oxygen when you breathe for the purpose of running from a predator. Same idea for us. I mean, when you travel anywhere... In our country, you see houses, you see townhouses, you see apartments. We build physical structures that become our refuge. And not just from the physical elements and the physical surroundings, but we walk into these places that we've turned into our homes and we feel safe. We can take our shoes off and walk barefoot or wear those goofy slippers or, you know, our hair doesn't even have to be combed. We feel safe to just be who we are. So that physical structure gives us the gift of refuge. And when we are safe in that way, We can live, we can create, we can love, we can enjoy, we can laugh, and we can breathe. We can breathe deeply and in a way that allows our body, mind, and spirit to align in an amazing and healthy way. And for those people who don't have a home, a physical structure, then finding alternative refuge sometimes becomes a full-time job. And we see tents or we see people finding 
you know, relatively safe places to huddle. But that becomes one of the primary activities of life, is finding refuge, food and shelter, sustenance and refuge. Those, those two things, those two very basic and necessary things allow us to live to live fully, to live in a way that is satisfying. It allows us the luxury of growing and evolving, transforming. There is a psychologist, Dr. Maslow. He may have been a psychiatrist, but in any case, he was a brilliant man and he taught about human needs, and he says at the very basic level, we need safety and we need food. And until those two are met, we don't pursue the higher level needs. We don't pursue accomplishments. We don't worry so much about our social circle. We don't worry about if our hair is messed up and what other people think about The need for safety and for sustenance for food comes first. And then once we have refuge, once we have enough to eat, then we pursue life. In very amazing ways, we become creators of great things. We become inventors. We become poets. We become teachers. We become engineers or techie people. In California right now we have fires and people are either going to other people's homes or they're finding hotels or they're moving to safety in RVs. So in the face of threat, refuge still is very central to what we need and what is important. So refuge is a a condition of being safe. Refuge allows us to live and to breathe. But the thing is, the thing is, you know, we can have a beautiful home, we can have enough to eat, And we can still long for refuge from the deepest part of our hearts. Because even when we're physically safe, we long for that experience or consciousness of safety. For that peace that awakens in our hearts when we are safe on all levels. We can be in a wonderfully physically safe environment and our guts can be tightening up because something is bothering us or irking us or frightening us. Or maybe we look back on something we did and didn't do and we cringe at the thought of, oh my gosh, I did that. Our heads can pound because we're overwhelmed with too many things to do and maybe three or four things are demanding attention all at the same time. In the midst of the stuff, in the midst of the fires and the pandemic and the economic challenges and the isolation and the news and the anger and the politics, we can end up feeling small. We can end up afraid. We can feel helpless, hopeless. And there we are. It's difficult to breathe. And it's difficult to live when we are caught up in it. And we all know what it is, right? And I know, I know I'm preaching to the choir here because everyone who's part of this service right now is a spiritual giant and has an amazing spiritual practice and knows better 
I know better. But I still get caught up in it. My guess is that each and every spiritual giant listening gets caught up in this too. It's just the way we're made. Something frightens us and a chain reaction of physiological changes happen within us and we start getting stuck. There is a way of thinking in our culture that fills our mind whether we invite it or not and we get stuck. Or the conditions, the conditions just keep escalating. Those fires, they're getting worse. The pandemic, I don't know, it it seems a long way from being gone. I, I know and I affirm and I see it gone. But it's not going to happen this week. So it becomes difficult to breathe. It becomes difficult to live when we get caught up in it. And so it's because of this that Tara Brock teaches about true refuge. She tells her own story. She was diagnosed with a chronic debilitating illness and really felt attacked by it and resisted it and fought it and learned that she needed to see it differently. She needed to be able to say yes, to say, I consent, and work with it and find that true refuge, the one that lives in her awakened heart. She told stories of people that came to her for counseling or spiritual coaching, and one woman Pam was taking care of her husband who was dying. And Pam talked about the pain of that, how deep the pain was. But the worst part for Pam was she was terrified she would not take care of Jerry, her husband, well enough, that she wouldn't do a good job. And Pam needed to just except that she was doing the best she could and and the fact that she was there loving Jerry was good enough. So this comes up in many different ways, many different circumstances, and the process is so human and so foundational to who we are. This is why I think this book is a wonderful place to focus our attention, a wonderful book to talk about with each other. Tara Brock says, and so in those situations, we pray for refuge. Help, I want to feel protected and safe, loved and at peace. I want to belong to something greater than just myself. Have you ever felt that, that wanting to feel protected and safe and part of something greater, greater than myself, than just myself? And this is paraphrased because the actual quote was too long to fit, but she she said essentially, saying I consent or yes relaxes our defenses against the present moment and allows us to be more present and more open-hearted. Last week, Reverend Sonia Milton talked about the power of saying yes, and Tara Brock teaches the same thing, I consent. It doesn't mean that I choose this challenge to fill my life. But the fact that it is filling my life, I consent to be present for it. I consent to find a true refuge in my heart in the midst of it. I consent to still live fully in the face of it. 
That's what she means by being more present and open-hearted, living more fully in the face of it. And when I say yes, and I consent, when you do that, I believe you will find that you can breathe again, that you are gifted again with that present moment, that sense of being fully alive despite what might be happening. Again, Tara Brock said, this yearning for refuge is universal. It is what lies beneath all of our wants and all of our fears. We long to know that we can handle what is coming. We want to trust ourselves, to trust life. So as we move through this book, taking a close look at refuge and practicing skills that lead us to that true refuge that lives in our hearts, we grow that sense of the greater self, the I am greater than this. And we learn to trust ourselves to move through these challenges. And that trust expands to a trusting of life and that ability to breathe and to live, no matter what may be happening. Another Buddhist teacher that we've read and talked about is Thich Nhat Hanh. And he says, do not lose yourself in the past, Do not lose yourself in the future. Do not get caught in your anger, your worries, your fears. We could add your sadness, your helplessness, your hopelessness, your sense of loss. Do not get caught in those. Honor them, allow them, acknowledge them but do not get caught in them. Always, as you notice them, as you give them their moment, come back to the present moment and to the truth of what is right now. And then when you do that, you touch life deeply. So we take refuge in God, in truth, in love, in the presence that we experience when we set out on this path of awakening true refuge. This is why refuge is worth seven weeks of our life or maybe even much more. So welcome to our book study program. If you sign up, your facilitator will give you a packet that is a study guide. If you do not sign up for a group, call me. Call the church or email, and I'll talk you into it. No, if you do not sign up for a group and you still want a study packet, email the church and ask for one and we will send one to you. I wish for each and every one of you, each and every one of us, true refuge, the peace and freedom of an awakened heart. Namaste. As we enter this time of meditation, I invite you to become still. I invite you to take your favorite meditation posture and let the music of Narayan and Janet enter your heart. Fill your heart 
as we now center within. So I invite you to move more deeply into our time of meditation as we do so I invite you to take a few moments and simply notice the movement of your breath
Notice how your breath feels as you breathe in and as you breathe out. Allow your breath to come easily and effortlessly. Allowing your breath to find its own natural and easy rhythm. And notice how it feels. Notice how it feels. Notice if it is cool or if it is warm, if it is fast or if it is slow. Notice your breath and honor that it is the very breath of God moving in and through you in this very moment. Notice your breath and allow your heart to open in gratitude for your breath. Your breath is your life. Your breath is the very life of God that moves through you, that breathes through you. Notice how it feels, this breath. Notice how your breath takes you deeper within, deep into your own awakened heart. And notice the peace, the freedom that is alive within your heart. Notice your breath and notice how it takes you to that sacred space within you where you know truth, where you know the presence of God. And for a little while in the silence, rest in the presence that is God. I take refuge in God. I take refuge in truth. I take refuge in love. 
Holding those affirmations in your heart, allow yourself to gently and easily bring your attention back to this room, to this time, to this place, to this moment. Allow yourself to become fully present in the now moment. When you're ready, open your eyes. And in your heart, join me in saying, thank you. Thank you, God. Amen. Ah, there you are. It is that time in our service where we stop and pause and give thanks for our prosperity and our abundance. We are so blessed to be in this wonderful flow of giving and receiving. And so we joyfully tithe to Unity of the Valley Spiritual Center as we say together, God's love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am and have, all that I give and receive. I am grateful. I just want to thank you. wanna thank you your love has set me free I just wanna thank you you to join me now in giving thanks and gratitude for that constant flow of abundant good that comes into our lives each and every day. We are so blessed with our prosperity and our abundance, and we say this affirmation with all our heart together, the inexhaustible resource of spirit is equal to every demand. There is no reality in lack. Our abundance is here and now manifest. And so it is. Amen. Please join with me now in the singing of our peace song. Eternally, now there is peace. 
We may be physically distant. It seems like forever, doesn't it? But we are so spiritually close. We are. I so look forward to seeing everyone back in the sanctuary. It will happen. Hopefully one day soon. Until then, we stay united in unity as we say together the prayer for protection. Together, the light of God surrounds me. The love of God enfolds me. The power of God protects me. The presence of God watches over me. Wherever I am, God is. We are one holy family. We celebrate our oneness and honor our diversity. And so as we bring this spiritual experience, this service to a close, I invite you to join with me in our final affirmation. And then during the week, hold this affirmation in your heart. So join me in saying, God is is my refuge. Again, God is my refuge. And so it is. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you have been blessed by the service. I know that I've been spiritually fed. Reverend Daya Adams does it every Sunday. I am so blessed by her message and meditation, and I'm ready to face the week, no matter how the skies might look. I know my divinity within will see me through. So thank you for joining us. If you would like, you may send in a video of you and your family waving. And perhaps that may be a challenge for some of you. So instead, maybe you just might want to send in a photo of your family that we can look at at the end of service. That would be wonderful. We would love to see your smiling faces in either format, video or photo. You can send them to unityvv at packbell.net. But until then, I'd like to start the waving of the hellos and wish you all a blessed week. Hi, everybody. In a happy mood, feeling gratitude. Thank you, thank you. Gratitude is my name. Feeling grateful is my game. Thank you, thank you. I'm ready. When I lift my head up. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hello. I see in the the valley. Through gratitude. Our first attempt at men zooming. Like you're waving to the congregation saying, I love you. I love you. I love you. Yes. I love you. Namaste, everybody. And I don't know if we're supposed to have video on this.
So we have to wait for 20 seconds. Send love. Send love to everyone out there that you want to send love to. Yeah. <laughs> send kisses. There we go. Okay. Keep waving a couple more seconds. There we go. All right. Thank you all so, so much. Say hi, everybody. Hello, everybody. How are you? How are you? Are you? Oh, you're fine. We miss you. We miss you. We miss you. We miss you. We think about you. We thought to you. We hold you in our hearts. In our hearts. And we'll see you soon. See you soon. See you soon. I'm too soon. Bye bye. Bye guys. Guys. Shante, Shante, Shante. Namaste. Set me free.